Shalom, brothers and sisters. World leaders at the United Nations to focus on development, climate change, and everything under Ukraine's war shadow. And of course, Zelensky just had to be there in person this time. Presidents, prime ministers, princes, and monarchs. Just as the Bible describes it, all the kings and the leaders and the great men all coming together. Begin their annual gathering in New York on Monday, right past, focusing on development, climate change, and the harrowing Ukraine war, which the world seems powerless to stop. They start their week of PAC programs on Monday with a summit of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, the 17, if they include the 18th involving Israel and Palestine, it will be 18, with the ambitions to cure the world's ills from poverty and hunger to climate change, inequality, and bringing about peace and justice by when? Yes, 2030. Peace and security, peace, stability, peace and safety. Then sudden destruction shall come upon them. Guterres said that he considers the SDG meeting my most important objective for the whole week. President Xi Jinping of China, Vladimir Putin of Russia and Emmanuel Macron of France and Prime Minister Rishi Sunak of Britain are all skipping the summits as is Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India. There's a couple of big names there that won't be there. Asked about the striking absences of the leaders of the council's permanent members, Guterres said, This is not a vanity fair. What matters is not their presence, but their government's commitments, he said. Now, that's interesting and, and very revealing because it doesn't matter about these leaders. They're all going to be replaced and controlled by Antichrist and his minions. It's not about them, it's about their country's commitments. They could care less about these leaders if they don't toe the line and do as they're told. Action is what the world needs, he said. One of a kind moment is happening right now to assess the state of world affairs and act for the common good. This is not a time for indifference and indecision, Guterres told reporters. This is a time to come together for real, practical solutions. People are looking to their leaders for a way out of this mess which they created. Yet in the face of all this and more, geopolitical divisions are undermining our capacity to respond. So to describe to you what he's saying here is, we are in a crisis that they've created, and we can't get out of it because of the geopolitical divisions and the sides and everyone. We actually need to remove all the barriers and create one world. With one leader. Because then there's no divisions. Everyone will do as they're told and everyone will toe the line and everything will be great and we can respond as one beast system. If we want a future of peace and prosperity, peace and security, peace and stability, peace and safety, based on equity and solidarity, leaders have a special responsibility to achieve compromise in designing our common future for our common good. Next week in New York is the place to start. So they're busy with all this mumbo jumbo, build up and preparation for the Antichrist. It's all happening right now. And it's a seven year plan. So they announced they need seven years of accelerated, because time's up, transformative action. Because everything's going to transform to what the devil wants in his image. To achieve SDGs. The SDGs are the 17 sustainable development goals that the UN put in place 8 years ago. Through which they want to establish a one world government. Now if I said that statement 4 years ago. You'd all be screaming conspiracy theorist. And they'd be like doing all sorts of crazy things about me. Right Now it's fact. And no one bats an eye. And that is how blind we become the closer we become to liftoff. It's crazy. And we wondered how people would sleep at the very, very end. This is how. Below is a quote from the UN's website regarding the upcoming summit, during which they hope leaders of the world will commit to a seven-year initiative to achieve all their goals. The SDG summit in September 2023 must signal a genuine turning point. It must mobilize political commitment and breakthroughs our world desperately needs. It must deliver a rescue plan for people and planet. 
P.S. There is a rescue plan for all of those bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. We will be rescued shortly. At the center of their rescue plan, heads of state and government must recommit to seven years of accelerated, sustained, transformative action, both nationally and internationally, to deliver on the promise of the SDGs, their covenant. Leaders can show their resolve by adopting ambitious and forward-looking political declarations at the SDG summit and present global and national commitments for transformation. And it's a weak process symbolizing the seven years ahead that they have to commit to. Those are not coincidences. They're thinking seven years, and that's prophetic. God didn't prophesy and say eight and a half years or 6.3 or four years or three and a half or two, and that's the whole thing. No, seven, a week, seven years. And here, for the first time in history, everyone is constantly shouting and talking about seven years. And that seven years is from now to 2030. How can people not be excited and see the writing on the wall? Those who believe that the 70 weeks of Daniel, Daniel 9, 24 to 27, remain relevant for our day would answer yes. They believe the last week of seven years, as the prophet described in 9.27, awaits a future fulfillment now. In Daniel 9.24, the Lord revealed all he intended to accomplish through his people, the Israelites, and his holy city, Jerusalem, during the 70 weeks. His focus is back on the Jews and sorting them out once and for all. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Jesus in Matthew 24.15 refers to the fulfillment of Daniel 9.27 as a future event. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation... Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. When asked about the end of the age and his return to the earth, Jesus mentioned Daniel's prophecy of desecration of the temple as a sign of these things. And we see everything in place for the building of the third temple. The heifers are ready for 2024. The priest school has completely trained their priests. They've traced their lineage. They've got their high priest ready. They are ready on everything. They've practiced the rituals, the sacrifices, the feasts. They are good to go. They need permission to build now. And even without building, they can take the altar they've already prepared and start sacrificing animals. They are ready to do the heifers' ashes and anoint everything and make themselves pure for their services. They are prepared. That stuff is happening. And if this sound deal includes them, their permission to build their third temple, they've already got the rail from Ben Gurion Airport straight to the Temple Mount ready for the temple. The time is now. It is exciting. It is happening. It is in front of us. And people are sleeping. We are working. We are going about our days. We are facing normal things. People are marrying, giving in marriage, buying, selling, doing everything that the Bible said would happen. And we're living in the days of Lot and evil and horrifying abominations all around us. The worship of false gods is rife amongst us. It's all happening. And everybody still just does their nine to five. Doesn't get into the word of God, avoids church or studying of the word of God doesn't get together with like-minded people to reach deeper into God's truth and just accepts that the world is just quite fine and everything's okay. No nuclear bombs are going to drop. They're just making empty threats. We don't have to stress. But country after country is going through coups. Country after country attacks, starts shooting at each other, starts wars. Everybody accepts it as normal because the sleepers are sleeping. But we who are awake get more and more excited every single time because all these things have led to this moment in time. And if this moment in time was an hourglass, it's done. Time's up. There's nothing left. The only thing left 
is for trumpet boy to figure out how to blow the trumpet and then go straight into the angel witness protection program and we're getting up there right after the dead in christ god bless keep looking up we know our time is now shalom